I just feel like yeah, whatever happens, even even if the the even if there is, if or when there is a trough of drum and bass, like there's no like for the ones that like are here for um, for the drum and bass, we're not really like we're just like yeah, like we've mm. seen this before. It, it will it will not get cool. Comes in waves. Yeah, 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 and we'll just we'll keep the the drum and bass has always had that underground. Has always had that when it does go to the underground, there are still promoters mm. and there are still fans that that will pack out clubs and stuff um and yeah so that's why i feel like yeah i i love the popularity like that i could see that there's a bit more of a popularity mm. with it now but like yeah um i think it's going to go even hotter yeah you you reckon yeah, i've got yeah. i've got a prediction i'm going to throw my prediction out there yeah, and we'll yeah, see what see happens all right yeah. killer killer bo- 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 podcast killer killer official <laughs> street culture tv Beatbox Creative. Killer Color. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Color Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Color Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, care to be. Uh, you, you just couldn't put two and two together and get five with this one. You need to be here. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Um, big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people that have been sharing from the very get go. Um, mm, excuse me. Um, inside the house today, Crewcast affiliate, collaborator. In the drum and bass world from Harry Shotter to P Money and beyond. I mean, you know, we're talking about up upscaling to new heights of DJing um, and production um, within the genre of drum and bass. And this is the man to do it. He goes by the name of Gino inside the house. Oh, oh right, man. man. Oh, big up, man. That's, a, that's quite an intro. That's quite, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thrift. That's yes. that describe it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Where have you travelled from, my brother? Uh, Cambridge. Cambridge. Ah, yeah. The bridge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, not from there originally, but that's that's where I live. That's where are you from living. originally? Uh, Essex, Harlow in Essex. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've lived there, but yeah, that's where I'm from. And big up uh, Harlow, big up Essex, yeah. big up uh, Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, man. It's good there. I like it. Yeah, it's got yeah. a lot of it. It's got a lot of uh, university catchment for those that ain't from the area, but know mm. where it's at. It's... Yeah, lots. I think there's like, I think there's like 30, I think it's 31 unis, like 31 colleges within the uni there. It's like some, yeah. What? There's loads, yeah. It's just all dotted around. I didn't realise this until I moved there, yeah. Really? It's, yeah, it's mad. Do you feel like you, you, you have a sense of ear to the ground when, when it comes to, like, that level of um, uh, of young people and you like, the, the, the culture it relies on those kind of sources, doesn't it? Mm, yes, yeah, yeah. And even, like, drum and bass is kind of... I, I'm, I'm watching over the years that how drum and bass is growing there from, from the like the 18 year olds and and beyond sort of thing and really? yeah, it's interesting it's interesting because yeah, yeah, they 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 kind of command the the tone and the and the nuances of what mm. our our scene is isn't it yeah because there's so many of them there's a lot of students man <laughs> they're there's, everywhere there's, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's thousands there's thousands so. <laughs> all over the shop yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right big up for all, all the youngsters inside the place i mean this is an archivist channel and a, a show dedicated to the journey and um and people's lives and uh uh you know as a as as a gentleman who it's reasonably like kind of come out into fruition more recently. Mm. We were talking just before you came in. I mean, these things come with a huge level of dedication and hardship, mm. doesn't it? So it's not an easy ride of just jumping no, in. Like, it's not, it's where not. did it begin for you, my brother? Um, so I've been, uh, I've begun like, well, I started as a drummer. I was playing drums at like the age of 13 in this like, um, like uh, arts funded, government funded arts scheme that they used to have. Uh, God knows how long ago in Essex there, right. um, and then I've just always been into like music and but then but the DJing and the producing started like when I was about like um, like early twenties or like like nineteen twenty started DJing and then was like ah oh, I wanted to just yeah make my own tunes and that, that kind of it wasn't so long after I started learning to DJ that I was like now I want to buy a Mac and I want to start making tunes you know yeah. Um, so yeah, about like twelve years producing, I think. So we're talking yeah. like what early noughties, mid noughties. Yeah, uh, yeah, like to what twenty? I can't. Uh, twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Twenty eleven. Okay. Something like that, I think. So mid twenty, uh, mid noughties. Yeah, it's interesting that the 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 time of 
of your entry into music making was going through a huge transformation, wasn't it? From mm. from LimeWire and Napster. Oh yes, yeah, over, yeah, yeah. Over to yeah, so the the dub plates suddenly become you know downloadable. And yeah, that must be crazy for you to to have been part of that. Yeah. So, um, like when I first started DJing, it was CDs, and I was a real like you know I was one of the last to move from CDs to <laughs> USBs. I just wouldn't have it. I, I would always have my CD case with me, and um, and yeah, like because I, I had a pretty good system. You know, you gotta have some of them. I'd have like the same track on two CDs, but it just took me ages to get rid of the CDs and go onto the USBs. Um, was that just a purist kind of... I don't, no, I don't know if it was a purist. It was just like ease. Uh, I was playing a lot of squat raves at the time, so like, and they never really had the USB ones, so I'd just take my CDs with me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, when... when But I, 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 I see it as quite... It was, I, was, I kind of grew with that, like with, with the streaming stuff. Like mm. I kind of become... I don't really remember the, the switch... Um, because I kind of grew with the, my, I started putting my music out a lot more when Spotify was um, mm. like already there, kind of. Yeah, apart was, from yeah. one or two releases. It's um, interesting, but you 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 cut your chops and uh, built built skills on the squat scene. Yes. Talk to me about the talk to me about the squat scene for his time. Oh yeah, so um, I was uh, I had a different name then. I was Rushmore, um, but. A couple of things happened and I changed my name to Gino, to my my yeah. name, which is Gino. Yeah. But yeah, like it was like 2014, 2014, 2015. Um, yeah, London, it, all London shows, London squat mm. raves. Um, yeah, it was just really, like every week or every other week, there were these squat raves. And um, I played my first, I played my first proper gig because I entered a, a DJing competition. I wasn't really producing much at the time and... I won a set and then there was a squat rave promoter at the set. It was at Brixton. I played Brixton Jam. Love Brixton sick, yeah, Jam. Old venue. tight south. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there was um, a guy there and he saw me play um, Ellis. And uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm putting on like squat parties. Uh, i got a drum bass set there if you want. Because I was playing dubstep at the time. I was like, I was really, really into dubstep. So then I, I started playing these squat raves. And um, once I played one, then, you know, they kept asking me to play other ones um but yeah it was uh it was a really good in because um yeah it was it was just like it was just really raw very raw yeah. and very like um i say like community because you know there was like the the party lines and the you know it was very much um you saw the same people at each mm. one and stuff but mm. that was like yeah 2014 i think they still haven't been to one in a long time but i'm, I'm pretty sure they still they're a lot more yeah, and under the radar. Back then, they were under the radar then, but yeah. even now, I think more so. Like, probably all on Snapchat now or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, and this is. I, I think the word squat is as triggery as the word graffiti. It's like the moment you say it, it suddenly it, it, mentally uh, it, it spirals into a picture of you know a small CD or undertone, mm. um, which in many cases is just a revolutionary movement in yes. getting that sound out like a pirate radio as well that's another triggery kind of but these things um help mold and shape again just even going back to the youth uh, um euphemism of youth it's more it's it's to facilitate an entry whether it's you're learning a dj or something i mean but for a lot of people that's really hard to come by like mm. it's hard to find that entry and for you to just been there at that time and say oh yeah you've got some you know, squat parties if you want. Yeah. And you just being up for it. I mean, it, that, that, that's quite a, a, a bold step in itself, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I felt like uh, the, the first set went really well. It took me ages. I, I must say it took me ages to get that first set. I got, I didn't, I didn't, um, I, I, I'd done a few DJ competitions and didn't, didn't hear anything, but it's, I think it's just about continuing and just keep doing it. Cause you know, whatever you, you want to get a gig, you got to keep doing the, whatever it takes. So, mm. and I, it seems as though that one just went really well. I brought my friends and they made a good racket. Like, you know, so people obviously saw that and then, um, yeah. So, but it is, um, but it did feel like a a point in time where, you know, I would tell my mates, oh yeah, like this guy come up to me afterwards and said, if I want to play squat rave, they were like, we never even been to a squat rave. Like, let's do it. Like, and then, yeah, then sometimes I'd bring my friends, sometimes I'd just go on my own. But yeah, it was a good, um, it did feel like, yeah, that was my in to that. Because then after that, I went and um, 
got myself a show on uh, Rough Tempo. I was doing that every week. Wicked. Um, and yeah, that was sometimes I'd do like four hour radio shows, yeah. you know, like this. It's just, a, it was a real training ground for yeah. me. Like Some back breaking shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be playing and then they'd, they'd come in and be like, yeah, the next, next DJs, they're not turned up. Like, can you just, can you roll through? Mm. And I was there with my CDs and I'd be like, yeah, I should have enough tunes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, four, of course, four. no USB, <laughs> quickly download some stuff. <laughs> no, no. So, um, yeah. So that was like my, those were my early years, you know, that, that are very memorable for me that mm. I would, uh, yeah. Did you see any crazy stuff in those squad parties? I mean, does it hold um, up to its reputation? Y yeah, you know what? I think luckily the ones where all of the crazy stuff happened, like I, I really wasn't at. It was like the, the ones like... The ones that got the, away. Yeah, there was one where like someone's finger got chopped off inside i don't know how i think they got it caught somewhere it wasn't in a malicious way like but i wasn't there for it um and yeah but there was some messed up things that happened in uh in some of them but when when i when i was physically there i didn't see anything like anything too crazy but I, i've heard of the other ones really? that i wasn't at that, that were yeah really? I know. It's, it's just mind-boggling it still goes on now yeah it's almost like your name's not down you're not coming in yeah and, yeah and, oh, i love that yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah give me danger little stranger that sounds great yeah yeah why'd you change your name oh uh, so i started off as rushmore then um then i was arnoni um but, uh, but i was working with um i was working with um a couple artists from like originally from Newcastle, Sub Zero, Tax Man, nice. Original Sin, and they were like, wow. "Oh, mate, I can't, I, I can't see your fucking, I can't see your name, mate. How, how do you see your name?" <laughs> and I'd be like, "Oh, it's Arnoni." They're like, "Oh, is it Arnon? Arnoni? Oh, mate, I don't know." How. And I was like, "Oh, sod this, man!" And so I just changed it to Gino because I was like, well, "Everyone knows how to say that." Yeah. There's a chef called Gino. Yeah. You know, people know since the chef. People have been more. People have realized. Oh, yeah, that's a name. Like you know. Um, it used to be like, oh, the ice cream. And then mm. like now it's like the, you know. Um, <laughs> Gone through so all the emotions of the, 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 the name. Right? Yeah, so I released one EP as Arnoni, but I changed it because people kept, kept calling me Arnone, which is like the English pronunciation of, of that name, but I didn't really like it. So I was like, oh, I'll change it. And then I had to start from basically zero again. Yeah. Um, That's the first thing that comes to my mind is like every time you make those, those critical yeah. changes, they're like foundational yeah. changes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I was just, I just saw this as like, I, I love this so much that like, I didn't, I didn't see it as like, um, an obstacle or anything. Yeah. I was just like, God, I'm just in it for the long run anyway. Like, so, and I've, um, yeah, I'm, I'm confident in like, like what I want to be doing, like, uh, as an artist, you mm. know, so like, I'm always going to be making tunes, putting tunes out. So like, I, I want to be, and it feels, I feel a lot more comfortable as, uh, as my, my name, yeah, my birth of course, name. Yeah. Um, for me personally, but I do like, I do like the, um, you know, the kind of made up, I call them superhero names, like, you know, like, um, to be an artist called like Sub-Zero, for example, old type Sub-Zero, you know, like, um, you know, that's such a superhero name, like, yeah. it's like, you know, you got your real name, then you got your, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like your made up name, That's right. you know, Skrillex, you know, like, it's, it's such a cool, it's a cool yeah. thing to have, but I was like, nah, like, yeah, I'll just have my... my if you, it's, Everyone needs a Sasha Fierce in one form or another. So if mm. your Sasha Fierce is, you know, just your... Net, I mean, I'll, that's, that's, that's held with higher regard, I think. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but a couple of people have said that. Like, oh, that's quite bold. Or, like, just have your name as your artist. Like. Do you know what, though? I also feel, and this, you know, goes back to people beginning their journey, is like you, you shouldn't be afraid... There is a incubation, a demo, a demo process, and you can afford. You can afford to just because you can change mm. your name, change your direction, change the genre, change the you know the the circuit in which you you DJ on. You know what I mean? You can do anything. It is it, within a within reason. It's not going imp to implicate you financially. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you, I, it's a that's a good point. Just because you can, like you might as well. Yeah, if you're confident in like where. Like it doesn't doesn't change. It's not like you're changing um, industries or, or anything like that. But even if you want to change industries, it's not even you know. Mm -hmm. um, I do think we have time. I know life is short, but like sometimes it's like oh, life is long as well. You know, mm. Like, mm. not long, but you know, it's it. Um, yeah, we got time. You know, mm. um, so it's, yeah, might as well get it right. Like, so stoic of you to say so. I mean, time does time it flies. Yeah, before you know it, you're you know you're up front working with people you know well how did that even mm -hmm. I don't, 
get here. Do we have time to enjoy it? Do we have time to enjoy those moments? Mm. The moments of hard work and grit and, you know, because at the time it's a bit cumbersome, it's a bit, oh, it's labour. Oh, God, I've really got to make that decision. But actually, when you look back on it and the, how fast time goes, those more critical decisions should, should have actually been fun, shouldn't they? Yes, that's true, yeah. I often find this when, when I'm DJing sometimes, I'm like, like, I'm like so caught up in like the, the technical, like, oh, like, I want to play these three tunes at some point. I want to play these two tunes together at another point. I want to connect that, you know, that I'm like, it can take away like the, um, uh, like the actual, like real fun of mm. like, oh my God, I'm playing to like 5,000, 6,000 people, whatever. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, that's when I, I enjoy it the most is like sometimes like afterwards I'm like, oh, yeah, like oh, why didn't I just, but if I relaxed too much while I was there, I'd mm. just be standing there like, you know, just, just not really doing mm. any work, but you know it's it's work. But um, does, does ambition play a part of that as well? Is that you can't see the wood for the trees almost, like you say, whether it's you kind of configuring which way in a direction of music the audience would like. You're not even seeing the audience and shit yeah. like that. Um, yeah, some yeah sometimes, um, but uh, but I that's why I just try to remind myself like oh just um, yeah take it in for a sec you know whether that be in the studio. You know, wherever I got, like when I had P Money recording vocals or Harry Shotter recording mm. vocals, you know, up to that point, I'd not, not really worked with any any vocalists, you know, so I would have to like, um, I find those those moments kind of more, um, yeah, I didn't take those for granted, I don't think. Like I really I really enjoy like mm. working, with, working with artists that I'd like once saw at Brixton Academy like mm. 10 years ago and mm. used to go like all the time, you know, so... Um, yeah, so yeah, sometimes it's just good to to take stock, you know. Smell like, the flowers. Yeah, there's a smell of flowers. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. As our families would say. Uh, uh, talking to families, big shout out to my co D Harry Shotter because uh, you guys have been doing a lot of stuff together recently, mm. and, and and through through advancements in conversations that you know with, with Harry, you know, I've been around him so much, it's like you you have you've smelled some flowers, and you've you you're in this place where you've you've taken opportunity at each. A segue, and you've got yourself into this position working alongside Crewcast, and like you say, P Money, and the people that you used to admire or see on stage, and they're all of a sudden they're they're in your periphery. Mm. Crazy. Yeah, that is it is interesting how um, I think uh, Joe from Crewcast, I'll type Joe, I'll type Joe. He yes. um, he said he found me on YouTube because I just started my YouTube channel just doing something over COVID lockdown. Right. Like I just was. Um, I didn't really have much more time on my hands. I was delivering food. Like I was, I was a Tesco delivery driver. So I was like, it wasn't like I had, I was picking up more shifts, if anything, like I was more busy, mm. but I was like, oh, I want to do a YouTube as well. And then, um, and it was about like production tutorials, just free, free to access. They're still on there. Like, um, and then Joe went to learn. Um, he had a bit more time on his hands because they run events and there was no events. So then he found me on there. It was like, um, do you want to do some one-to-ones? I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, might have a go. And, that sounds and, good. And, uh, <laughs> and and then yeah, I kept sending him tunes, obviously. And then yeah, he, he, that's that's where that collaborated. That's where that like relationship started. Um, and since then, yeah, they've that and I met Harry because we were on a Harry shot up because we was on a um, it was in a writing camp. Uh, so it was <sighs> like yeah, so it was like him, couple vocalists, um, and I just went there with just loads of ideas. That was some like some heavier ideas, some musical ideas, and you know while like. Two vocalists would be like writing lyrics for one idea. I'd say to Harry Shot, like, oh yeah, do you, you want to hear this? Like, mm-hmm. I could really hear you on this yeah. sort of thing. Um, I I'd, love that. I love that shit. Yeah, I love, I, I love that. Yeah, and so and he was like, oh yeah, he was like, send me the the Dropbox link. I'll write to that while like these two will write to that other one, and yeah. So and then then yeah, it was like pretty much one or two takes and, and it was recorded there. Yeah. Um, giving giving Harry Shotter a beat is like giving him uh, giving him an already lit bomb to get rid of. Mm. He just runs with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he goes. I've never seen a man attack tracks mm. in quite the same way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a real... Uh, like, he... When... Um, he said like, "Oh yeah, I think I got something for it," and like, he just done it in front of the the everyone who was in there. They were like, "That was that is sick!" Like, yeah, get, oh get yeah, and he read it off as well as if it's nothing. Yeah, 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 and um, yeah. So it was, 
yeah, he really smashed that one. Um, I'm so, uh, yeah, so gassed that we got that one out in the end. Yeah. That, and that spawned you guys performing together. and Yeah, um, and yeah, and I, I, um, we done a little set on his, um, he does mic masters on Cool FM. And, mm. um, yeah, and I really liked, uh, yeah, we've we just been, it's good when, when you start um, playing more sets with someone, you start to like, mm. Bass Fest as well, you guys did the bass Yeah, that was, the, was that the first time we played together, I think. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, um, yeah that was that was like the, the beginning of that, really. Mm. Um, he spoke yeah. very highly of the, of the performance. Oh, I know yeah. he loves playing. Yeah, pe- people, people keep telling me. They, keep, they even mention it now. I know that was like last summer, but they, yeah, they also, they still mention it. Yeah. 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 No, I, rem- I remember it very well. Um, sometimes those moments, I mean, it, it kind of, again, just going back to the whole, you know, step back, smell the flowers sort of moments, you know. Like, what do you, what do you get when working with MCs, particularly in a live environment? What, what, what do you want? What, do you work in tandem with what works best for the MC? Or do you work in tandem with what's best for the overall performance? Uh, for me, for me, it's the, like, it's the audience. It's just the, yeah, the fans, the audience, like what are they? What are they doing? Yeah. What is because there's when it's just you and the crowd, it's like well, everything's kind of on me to you know what direction should I change it to? When there's like you, MC, then the crowd, it's like what can we do mm. for, for them? Mm. You know, so like, um, so if uh, yeah, I just like a trial and error, really, just test things out, or you know, if we haven't done a rolly one in a while, stick a rolly mm. rolling track in there, you know. Because I make a lot of like bass heavy kind of ro- rolling tunes as well. Like mm. there's there's loads that I like to yeah leave no stone unturned, you know. And um, if if like if I play a weird tune and it doesn't go off so well, then I'll I'll think that yeah these lot are not they're not wanting the weird tunes, you know. Mm. So um, yeah, but like with someone like Harry Shotter though, it's yeah he's. Uh, He's yeah. he he's got he got full control like he's like he know he knows what they want optimum he's, control he's, yeah, yeah yeah he you know he's obviously he's he's like closer to him than me like physically there and then also like yeah I just feel like a good MC really just takes control. Of All right, hold, hold on a minute. Okay, now you can, now you've got me thinking how an MC and a DJ how that enables the DJ. So. Call and response from an MC's point of view that then registers to you, and you're like, "Yeah, they like that one. Okay, we can go in this direction. Harry's got it covered. They're the conduit. Yeah, the MC's the conduit to the decision making. I guess like they're like they're like the the uh, restauranteurs, and you're the you're the chef sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, it's um, yeah, and I just you just notice sometimes like yeah, I mean if if you're both if if both parties are like on the ball as well. Like, then you should have you should have it covered. Like, um, if not, then it will just be a learning. As long as you can take it as a learning curve, whether mm-hmm. it's like you know, um, if you work with someone and they're just whether it be a a back to back partner or a, or an MC and and they say like, oh no, I'm not really feeling it today, you know, because it happens, like mm-hmm. you know. So um, then, but yeah, but more often than not, when you when all, both parties are on it and yeah um and yeah but it, but it does feel like that it does feel like does they it? are like a yeah that they are like the conduit to you know because the call and response is a great um it's a great testing method as well like you know it's an indicator uh, isn't it yeah, like, yeah yeah like um i would love to get an mc's view on it as well i, I have to ask harry shotter um like yeah what it's like what yeah what it's like is having you know someone like me as a dj or like what it's like having because sometimes you can just get caught up in um you know we've been doing it a while so like i feel like we just like um yeah you just you know you just go like game time and you just like yeah. you just crack on and yeah you just um there is a there is a sportsman athletic or should i say rather mentality to a drum and bass as a whole i think bass music generally but mm. there is this attitude and also there is a camaraderie in that as well isn't there of yeah. like this is this is serious play <laughs> like, it's like it's yeah. business but it's ser- it's you know it's fun business yeah um and th- that preparation that getting on that focus that uh, still is strong as ever in drum and bass isn't it i think so yeah and like the, the thing i like about it as well is that there's 
you know that there's generally 99% of the time there's going to be like a few people there or at least one person there where it's their first their, their first rave and they'll see me reloading tunes or they will see the MC like doing these bars and people calling mm. them back, you know. So and and I think that's um that's how that's how the drum bass community or like the rave scene, that's how you get other people involved, like um, you know, you just by by like latching onto what um what everyone else is doing mm. in the crowd and and that re- their re- the crowd's relationship with the DJ and the MC. Um mm. You know, uh, like the MC will call for the reload. Da, da, da. The MC does the reload. The crowd, the crowd goes mad, or maybe the crowd don't go mad. And you know, they, they, you know, but generally, <laughs> should we just reload that again? Ninety-nine percent of the time they do, but yeah, um, yeah. So there, there is, there does seem to be a bit of like camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and a whole new generation of people that weren't there, and and that's cool too. With mm. with. Um, organizations like Crewcast, DMB All Stars, and such like there's this influx of like new attention where it almost feels like a uh, jungle drum and bass is an already established scene. It's and it always was its own genre, but n- m- more now than ever, it's it then the the words, the actual title of the music is just such a given nowadays. It's like mm-hmm. yeah, it's always been there to a lot of the generations. It's always been there. It was. It's never been. You know, dubstep. It still has. It, it's still within a period where it 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 has it has to. St- it still in a weird way has to reestablish itself again. Yeah. But jungle and drum and bass is. It's just been such a big part of our British lives, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and this new audience are they're coming in already aware of what it is, but now the the profile and the platforms have raised game, haven't they? Mm, yes, like the it's so yeah, it's become. I'll say mainstream because it has just reached such a wide audience and there are, you know, there are pop stars, you know, making making tunes with DMB, drum bass and jungle beats and, you know, um, yeah. And I feel like I've seen a couple, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been doing it like 11 years or so and, you know, so I've seen like a couple peaks and troughs, but I've, I think this and I've heard from a lot of the veterans as well that the drum bass has never quite been, drum bass jungle has never quite been this big, like, wide and broad and obviously it's 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 going it's going crazy in america mm. right now as well which is always a you know, telltale sign that's, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. you know it happened with dubstep that blew up and i feel like but i think the thing is um i just feel like yeah whatever happens even even if the the even if there is, if or when there is a trough of drum and bass like there's no like for the ones that like are here for um, for the drum and bass, we're not really like we're just like yeah, like we've mm. seen this before. It, it will it will not get cool. Comes in waves. Yeah, 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 and we'll just we'll keep the the drum and bass has always had that underground. Has always had that. When it does go to the underground, there are still promoters mm. and there are still fans that that will pack out clubs and stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's why I feel like yeah, I, I love the popularity. Like that, I can see that there's a bit more of a popularity mm. with it now. But like, yeah. Um, I think it's going to go even hotter yet. You, you reckon? Yeah, I've got yeah. I've got a prediction. I'm going to throw my prediction out there, yeah, and we'll yeah, see what see happens. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's take Skrillex as a good identif- uh, a good indication, um, and let's go back maybe 20 years to glam rock hair metal, where things were very much you know lipstick and full on gloss, you know, New York dolls on steroids right so let's fast forward now to jungle drum bass right and i've got a prediction that because america is the way it is um we're gonna hear a drum and bass act but with a vocalist of a limp biscuit genre uh okay yeah 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 okay i see that Mm. yeah yeah it's gonna happen so kind of like and if it isn't happening, yeah. I'll get on that right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Limp Biscuit would that yeah, Limp Biscuit was sick, like and are sick, like yeah, that was. Uh, so you can see where I'm coming sick. from. It's like I you can see. imagine because the the drum bass is the pace of of half time hip hop. Well, yeah. they know hip hop. Yeah. So yeah. double that, and then then you got a kind of like rock rap kind of punk speed. Yeah, surely. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, and and I think because yeah, because we know like w- with what happened with dubstep and Skrillex, like. But I think there there were positives. There was like loads of pos- There's loads of positives with that, and you know the 
that you could take away some negatives. What's the negatives to you of that? Oh, to what? To the, the Skrillex taking the... Yeah, here's a basket, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no what do you I mean? Lo- we do it on general, general. I, I love Skrillex, Me man. too. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, like, but I get what you mean. Um, to some purists. Yes, yeah. Like, I remember back, you know, back like, um, yeah, 2011, 2012 and people, or 2010, like people would say like, uh, you know, like I prefer... I prefer the deep stuff. I don't like all that mid rangey mm. screechy, you know, but I kind of lost the reggae. And yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, like the the, the delay and stuff like, mm. but like I was just embracing, I like I liked both, you know. 100, I didn't want to, not saying I'm sitting on the fence, but I, I do anything that is, you know, I like so many types of music, but as long as it's good to me, mm. you know, and to me there was like, there's great tunes um, in the, the deeper, darker stuff and then there was great tunes of the... Um, that um like screechy stuff that was yeah. becoming popularized and new so like um and then now it's just now it's it's, it's kind of combined mm. um I've, i think that the those flavors and those sounds they're kind of combined similar things happen with jump up as well there's um there's lots of like bass heavy but also like half screechy half not screechy mm. jump up drum and bass you know mm. um i think there's just it's much more of a melting pot now I know it's always been a melting pot. Mm. And that's how when you step away from it, it is because mm. what you're talking about there is kind of splitting atoms, really, yeah. in sounds, sample packs, and how how you fuse fuse things. And I think that it's human nature to want to fuse and move things forward as incrementally as you can, isn't it? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a producer's role, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've. Um, um, I love working, yeah, I love working with samples and just and then going back and then um, going back to some of my old samples and then putting a different spin on my old samples and to make it almost unrecognisable as well. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, I really like, um, yeah, I like uh, I like putting out, I've put out a sample pack as well, I really enjoyed that. I'll pick it up, what, what, um, what, uh, what platform's that on? It's, uh, I was on, um, so I've done it through, it was on By The Producer, but they're, they're no longer operating anymore. So it's just on my, my website. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Link in my bio. If you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Instagram that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like I, um, yeah, and so, yeah, I love, um, and, and I do feel like I, oh, I'm contributing a bit. Because, you know, I'll, I'll listen to these tunes. Sometimes I'll get a tune in promo or something and I'll hear my hi-hats in there, you know, because I can, I can hear them because I've just spent ages <laughs> making <laughs> yeah, them, yeah. you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, those are mine, like or a riser or something so um yeah um and i feel like it's always been but the samples i must say they've got better and better i don't, I don't want to dive all into the technical stuff for people that are not te- you know not into like the producing but like the samples over the years like you buy a pack now that samples you got Tough. nice samples yeah yeah you know does that nice. does that even the field a bit i mean when you're talking about processing your own samples i mean that mm. as much as you're saying you know that's a, that's a rabbit hole in itself on particularly yeah. on this show but, yeah. um, <laughs> but but to be fair like that's what creates your usp isn't it like you say you automatically hear your hi-hats and you know what saturations you know what plugins that you put in you know how many hours that took and um when you go to a sample pack place which is absolutely fine by the way you know mm. no comments please it does it does open the the competition up doesn't it yeah is it especially like splice you know you can um yeah there's just so many it's great because you can be you can even be like a film editor or a video editor and you know they've got all the sound effects any effects yeah. and sounds that you could ever want on there but like yeah even the kicks and the you know you've got people like noisier making dr- sample packs oh, now like you mate, know um, forget it that, you know if you want a good kick whoa. maybe go to the you know it's it's simple like yeah if you want a good starting point you know go Go to that noisy yeah. sound effect, and you know everyone knows that they're sick. Like so, uh, um, yeah. And I just, I just think that's great because back then, um, the first sample pack I bought was like Doctor P sample pack, big up. And I told him the other day that, um, that, that yeah, that I, that his was like the first ever sample pack that I bought, and like it was the highest quality of that time that I could find. Like because I was, I did do a lot of searching, um, yeah. Whereas now, the the, the samples are almost endless and the uh, yeah the good quality what was it like so, meeting dr p when you know it was the first sample back that you kind of purchased um that, that's I, a cycle of life yeah, isn't it? it it is i know it, this this stuff's mad as well like because it, it was online it was on instagram which is as is that instagram is generally it's often how i meet like these people that i've looked up to for years um <laughs> and um they um 
Dr. P and Rock Sonics formed a, a drum and bass group called Freaks and Geeks and um, big up Freaks and Geeks. Come on. And then they like hit me up for a tune, one of my tunes. They're like, oh, do you have this tune? I think it was, I don't know what tune it was. It might have been, it might have been, might have been released. It might have been a dub. I'm not sure. I think it was one of my released ones, but I was like, oh yeah, sure. Here, have the VIP of it as well if you want. And then I, that, that's when I thought like, oh, I just want to <laughs> say like, yeah, like while we're here, let me just, let me just gas you up for a minute. Like you're, <laughs> like you're, you're, Sample pack was the first sample pack I bought, and it was really, um, yeah. And I rinsed those samples and in in tunes that you know um, that never probably never saw the light of day. You know, mm. uh, some of my first tunes are just you know uh, they're not going to be never going to be your best work, and that that's okay. But like, yeah, they were. It was good for me to like just yeah. It, 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 it's an okay sign, really, like that you it's what, landing in the right people's hands. What's that? The, um, the, the just. Having them discover your work, yes, yeah. And it, you don't, you don't quite know where it's come from. Is it, no. is it double? Is it? That's that's yeah. that's clarification, really. That you could, just, you just got to put shit out. You just got, to go. yeah. You got, to, yeah. That's it. You just got to keep like. Um, there's so many examples of that. Like there'll be some. There'll be, most times it's like, um, you know, putting out like if it's like oh, where you've got a release schedule, but then someone's like oh, do you want to do a remix? And then you'll do a remix. You do that remix because you want to and. Um, yeah, and the, and and that remix that you make, as long as it's like, as long as it is, you know, whatever you're doing, it's not like you're not slap dashing it. You're like making sure you leave no stone unturned. Like generally, that tune that you make that it was just some little remix to go in, it, um, mm. in it, just to squeeze somewhere within my schedule will be someone's favorite tune. Like yeah. they'll hit you up for like two months down the line and be like, oh, I've been. I've had this tune on repeat. Yeah, it's my yeah, favorite, yeah. and you're like, "Oh, that was just some thing that I just had, yeah. to, had to fit in." Yes, yeah, or wanted to fit in still, but didn't think that it was gonna be your, you know. So, um, th this happens so often. That happens like so often. Like the tunes that you think um, like are just not that are not your big hits. Mm. That they're the ones, you know. There are still people out there generally mm. that would be crazy over that tune. They're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that tune." But like, keeping take. Taking that into account and going back to what you said about no stone unturned. Now, um, if you're a producer and like you say, you're working with time restraints, like uh, it sends me with the anxiety <laughs> even talking about it. But no stone unturned and just constantly refining. And are you ever satisfied? Don't know. Got to keep on going. Yeah, I ain't got time. I'll keep it going. I don't know. That must drive any good producer up the fucking wall especially when you've got um a, a lot of attention going on and mm. people want you for certain things and your schedule is everything to you you know is there a compromise there y yes sometimes there is and some sometimes i like to put a i like to put a little barrier in place for myself to, or give myself these limitations so that um and it's just it's a it's i've learned to put on these limitations as such that like so i'll be like right let me i'm going to restrict myself to um this this synth or this sample because Ooh. and I'll like resample it and mm. I'll be like okay I don't want to be like I don't want to spend all day like trawling um that my my sample library for like a sound that sounds like this I'm I'm gonna see if I can make it because you can without going too much down a rabbit hole you know you can from from a you know one one simple womp or even like a a, a um a piece a, a little sample or, or a bass patch you can you can pitch it up and pitch it down you can you can get tonality from like mm -hmm. um, post-production anyway so like i'll generally like limit myself have like little limitations in place so that, that can um you just give yourself a bit more of a like uh restricted thing within that so like, i leave no stone unturned but like within some like healthy limitations mm -hmm. to prevent me being like Pro procrastinating into a yeah yeah and 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 going down a uh a, a path that like um that might just just take like three yeah, weeks or yeah or yeah like when if you if you've got an idea in your head you can maybe like or if you're hearing something if you've got like a little seed um i listen to a lot of um rick rubin's rick rubin's book uh book well i say listen to it because i bought the audio book but yeah mm -hmm. he talks about having um ideas and like as like a seed it could be just like a a bit of like a, a sample it could be birds chirping it could be you know a heavy bass sound but they're like your little seeds and you can like draw for them when you're like if you need like a bit of a theme mm. for a tune it could just be like one hit but anything that kind of um sparks um creativity mm. um yeah but the, but but i find the deadline thing yeah 
to be honest, I don't really. I, uh, my <laughs> All that being said, <laughs> my, my girlfriend says I work well to deadlines, but I don't think that I don't think that I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I'm not really too great with with deadlines when it comes to creativity. Mm. Healthy ones, yeah. If it's like oh. Um, well, it's learnt behaviour, isn't two, it? Two months, then yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you say, two months time, I get it done. But, but that's kind of a wind amount of time. But then you, you, you could quite easily, in fact, you could get it done within two days, and it's like that's, yes, that's a, that's the immaculate moment. Of... Uh-huh. That's happened loads as well. It's the all of my most successful. And this is one hundred percent of the time, give or take. The 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 tunes that do the best are the ones that like happened in two days max god that's good and i hate to admit it i really do because like you know <laughs> tell yourself right now <laughs> tell yourself this remember right, this yeah, Gino. yeah it's, it does it gets like that it gets like that um the yeah all, all, all of my most uh the, the successful ones have been yeah really short amount of time mm. like normally like an, sometimes even an hour to get the the meat of that idea and then yeah, a couple of days to get the version. And it's then... a couple of it's, it's coupled with the ingredients. Like how many how many how many samples of your own do you have you amassed? Like how many hard drives? I mean, mm. you've got to have a lot. Like the uniqueness of one sound could spawn spawn like a whole different song just because it sounded like the mood you were in, or it was so quirky and different that you just you had to work with it. How many mm. how many samples do you reckon you got? Oh, yes, there's there's hard drives for I have multiple multiple hard drives, you know, just full up. I never fr- I've never thrown a hard drive and they're all, you know, they're really? in their droves in, really? in my studio. Yeah, yeah. Um and um, you collect them like badges, just like loads. Yeah, and they sometimes the they're not sometimes they're not in neat files, but they're within projects and I have like I have like a time I have like a time span of like um of like like projects. And other than if it's uh, if it's samples that if I'm doing a remix for someone, mm. um, then I will I keep those very organised. I'll keep and I had I once had a label ask me, oh, you know that tune you remixed for us five years ago? Do you have those samples because we want to we want someone else to remix it as well now and we we don't we don't have the samples. And I that was the label asking me, <laughs> um, <laughs> like for the for the for the stems. Sorry, not samples. The stems to let to get someone else to remix it. I said, yeah, sure. Here, here they are. Like, wow. I keep, all my, I keep all the stems that. That's I, why you work with so many labels. You see, <laughs> you know what I mean. Ever efficient. If if I've been asked to do a remix, then yeah, I, I'm not going to throw those stems away. I don't know. They're just they're there, zipped up in my Dropbox. Mm. You know, I don't know why they're just. So OCD. Um, Mild OCD. Potentially, like I just I just feel like I don't want it. With the Dropbox, you can just leave it offline. Yeah, yeah, true. Big up Dropbox, and you can, um, you know, it hasn't got to take up a big part of your life. But I'm just like, what if I need it again? You know, what if I want to mm. make a VIP of the thing in mm. in five years? And you know, or because you hear know. stories, don't you? Of people just you don't do, have... yeah. Like some of the like, um, I forgot who said it now. It might have been, um, is it Elijah, the, the guy that does the yellow squares on on Instagram? Uh, I forgot his name. Comment below. Tell us. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He he says like yeah. Keep always keep your you know keep your version ones. Keep your um. Uh, keep your like yeah the projects and don't 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 be stupid and and you know allow allow yourself to lose a hard drive mm. just in case if one of your tunes becomes like you're never gonna know you never know if like a tune of yours is gonna become like a a, a moment in history. That like defines something. Yeah. I don't think like, um, yeah. I, I don't think that you you realize at the time whether sometimes you just realize I was just catching a vibe. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's good to keep just in case. Yeah. Just in case you you shaped history yeah. and you can go back. Like, yeah. um, but but the again just sticking with the OCD a little bit, just a little bit. Then do you, you do you look at your do you look at your uh, hard drives and your files and your samples? Do you, do you look at them in a in a, from a collector's point of view, I always find it interesting because mm. producers, there's so many layers to production and you've got to actually have a passion for every single moment. It's like, you know, it's from your core ingredients to delivering the food. There's a, there's, there's a love for every single moment, isn't there? Yeah, yes. I think, I think there's different types of producers. Um, I, I really, really enjoy the, um, yeah, like the, the, the mixing down side, like the technical side, um, like historically, like, People would always tell me like, "Oh, I dread the mix down stage. I dread, you know, I dread that." Like, which for those that don't know is just like the meticulous bit, which you know some people can spend all day just to get in the EQ right on the snare. But like, I, I really enjoy that bit um, b- 
because I think I've I think I've implemented a bit a bit of a, a healthy like eighty percent rule of like look this may not be you know it, it may not be like a technically sounding like a like a noisier tune but like this is where you're at and you've you've put enough time into this project here so yeah like you know, uh, it takes the pressure off yourself a bit, yeah right? yeah I think it's just a, a healthy amount of eighty percent like. Um, mm. Because yeah, like it's okay to be a, a perfectionist, but like as long as you're as long as you're like um yeah, just give yourself a bit of like leeway. I know that those two don't really go. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's, but you're right though, because a lot of people beat themselves up with the the complexity and technicality of a product of a produced piece when it's actually within the song the energy which is captured firstly on the demo, that's actually the real essence of the song. Mm. It doesn't necessarily be like, you know, to noise your standards of like, you know, EQ'd correctly entirely and it, you know, because that's the energy. And, and that can work both ways, right? Mm -hmm. Two different two different um, schools of thought. Yeah, I think the, the even um, even Fred again, uh, he, um, he wrote, uh, you know, that Leave Me Alone, the drum yeah. bass tune that he's yeah. done, um, like hugely successful. And he even admitted, I think I saw him post either on his story or on his Instagram, <clears throat> that he said, um, yeah, like he went through so many versions afterwards, but they en then ended up back at that, that version one kind of with the raw, because he, he mm. went so far into the technicality bit that he lost some of the essence of uh, mm. what, what that raw, what that raw version did. So, mm. um, yeah, it's just, I think it's healthy to, to just, um yeah to remind yourself that like actually and and it's happened to me before as well i've i've gone on to do like multiple versions of a tune the same thing happened with my push up remix mm. it got signed to um sony music in the end um um i i made like three or four different versions of of the tune and then i'd sent the version 1 to headex big up headex and he yeah, played well it at, he played it at um printworks and then he also you know it's one thing for him to play it but then he like uploaded the clip of him playing it and then and so that that started it wow <clears> there you then go. he played it at rampage and then that clip got uploaded and um and i think that 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 was like the beginning and then i was like oh i have to now retract because i was so confident i was i was confident at first but i was just exploring i was doing my leaving no stone unturned thing and mm. went on a huge rabbit hole of this remix that that never came to be, but I just I reversed, reverse engineered all of my stuff, and then we ended up back at that, the raw early version, mm. and kept that. It's confidence. Um, that takes confidence, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just Exploration. Making making decisions and and being and like standing by those decisions, and being like, well, I've done this now. Yeah. You know, and you know, I've, yeah, I've I've retracted my, you know. Um, yeah. It's kind of like uh, building like a castle. A thing or building like a Lego thing and then being like, oh, I need to, ch no, I wanted a different color door and then having to take everything off and put it, you know, <laughs> kind of rebuild it like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way. <laughs> I get that. I get that. I get that. Um, um, I mean, you know, you talk about headaches and you talk about rampage. Oh my God. Mm. The scale of that, that event and the people. And what, um, I mean, I know nowadays it's like, you know, yeah, it's what you're here to do, you know, this is this. This is Gino, <laughs> but um, you know the what? What does that do to the your production moving forward? Because obviously, there there's an anticipation, and more of the same. Please, yes, and and upload the video, and I want people to hear the stuff, and and that builds up momentum. Mm. Is there any? Do you, do you, do you place any pressure in in the creative space when you're in a studio? So I'm kind of kind of rival what I just did there because that got, uh. that got played. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I know what you mean. Um... Yeah, I f I think it's my my best work comes when I like forget about when I just forget about the past in any way that I can, you know that's that's happened that's cool because mm. um, yeah there'll always be the the voice that's in my head that says like oh you're gonna you're gonna drop the ball you know you're gonna or you you know um, yeah people are gonna just stop you know that voice exists and um, yeah, yeah so like but, I get it. But my best work comes when I can just when I can just forget about the, you know, if my last tune was successful, you know, we'll just take this as a blank canvas and, um, yeah, because if if that one does does because if if one does well, then you know this one takes a bit of a dip, 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 and then like if that one does, if the next one the next high is slightly higher than this high, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but it took uh, six months to get better than that last yeah. big thing, then. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think 
the interesting thing about it is that you just never really know what you're gonna what 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 I'm gonna make this year. Like mm. I, I do it in year. I think in my head is as like a year as a whole. Like you know, um, the the P money tune that we done last year. Like I didn't really know I was gonna make that at the beginning of last year. Mm. You know, these things just happen, and um, yeah, I, I've I've I find that quite exciting. Um, putting those things into place, like just done a tune with um, Spider. Um, big up spider and you know and it's got this and it's got this theme and you know um, but I didn't know I was going to be doing that at the beginning of the year like you Mm. know so it's just that's just exciting isn't it yeah yeah you don't know you don't know what you're going to do like you know love that but as long as you're always um, you know ready as your best self and when you turn up to the studio and you just you know uh, then you you can always just be a true representation of where you are as an artist and, and and what you're going to do within that within that time so but i don't know what i'm going to do in october for example music wise you know i was about to ask you what's the future <laughs> <laughs> but seriously there's a mark of a, of a professional then actually actually um articulating in a way sometimes the things we don't say the truth the the honest of uh the honesty of yeah you know what i, I understand that it may dip a little bit i understand that these are all individual you know fishing rods that i'm constantly prodding and you know some may have life and get get to one place and the others you know just might stay redundant and might come back later if i keep hold of the uh, of the stems you know <laughs> it's definitely yeah it's all of that isn't it mm. uh it's batting average it's law of average yeah it's uh it's and and again like taking taking a bit of the pressure away from um you know from future projects that haven't even happened yet like um some some projects they're always you know destined to not be like as big as your last project mm. and that's that's all right and that's and okay never, as well yeah it's never mm. gonna you know um yeah for for me as i um where i am at the moment you know putting out i'm putting out um quite a lot of quite a lot of tunes quite a lot of music because i'm you know uh even though i may not look it but i'm i'm actually like uh i'm seen as a new artist and, and, and like coming up i know i'm not seen as a new artist but i'm on the come up do you mm. know what i mean mm. so like i for me, I f- I do feel as though I have to like I want to and have to like have a um, quite a high output year on you know yeah. year on year every month yeah yeah one or two releases you know so um, so at the moment I'm not thinking like ah oh, if I can just work on the perfect tune for October <laughs> uh, you know if I could just you know you know if you work every day there's a saying um, uh, well, there was this like. Oh, I don't. I don't. The story might take ages, but like, there was like one group. I think it was Hormozy. Alex Hormozy said it. It was on on another podcast, but he said like there was this like um, pottery class. Uh, so there was like two. This pottery teacher had like two classes. He had one class, and he told that class like, "You have to make the perfect pot. I just want you to, no matter how long it takes, I just want you to. After this course, I want you to make one perfect pot." And then the other class, he told them, um, "I want you to make." as many pots as, as possible. Your task is to make just as many pots as possible. And so at the end of the course, you just like you're you're judged on quantity. The other group was judged on like who has the perfect quality, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It turns out the the you know at the end of the course, the the class that was like told quantity is best rather than the quality, like just keep making mm. keep keep finishing products. They come out with the better. They, you know, they had multiple good good pots because they were told just to repeat just repeat the goods. Just repeat the stuff. And just you fucking know. great. I love and, it. and the other one, the, the ones that were told now, are your task is to make one perfect one. You know, they they, they come out with pretty average, an mm. average pot. You mm. know, so like, and it is true with with music. Like, just keep. Um, That's kind of yeah. AI, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's kind of is yeah, <laughs> machine kind of learning. AI. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it just keep yeah. going, repeat and repeat and repeat. Yeah. Um, well, no, just make the you know quickly source the best looking thing that kind of looks like the pot, but. Us as human creatives, we have this opportunity to really develop ahead of time, mm. you know, as well as in real time. But what the, I love that story, dude. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I didn't butcher story. it, but that was that. Yeah, that it kind of um, it, that really it resonated with me because yeah, it's uh, um, I do I do genuinely feel that as well. Like um, just repeat, like repeat it because like um, you'll learn things on each project, whether it be you're making clay pots or whether you're making a tune like you'll learn things on um like on each because there's a lot of um there's a lot of like remix competitions where they give out these stems for 
um, yeah, to I make them. tunes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like, I used to, I used to rinse them. I didn't even used to enter the competitions, but I used to just make the, um, I used to make my own remix of it because you get the theme. It's like here's the theme, do a remix, and you know, um, I used to really enjoy that because, um, yeah, you you learn even if you take one thing from it, like oh, these hi hats sound better than the hi hats from my last tune, you know. And then you, it's exactly like machine learning. It's mm. kind of, it's like actual learning. Yeah, yeah. You're just learning, and and then on your next one, you can use whatever Whoa. you've taken. Um, it it kind of reminds you, you know, like when bands used to do cover versions of songs. Mm. You know, where'd that energy come from? Why did the Why do the crowd respond to that? Even though it's us, even though it's us as a band, it maybe me, me beatboxing and having copy other people's songs. Like, okay, so what is that? And you're right. It's like what what makes that hi hat? What makes that snare better? What makes then people respond in that particular way. I mean, it's all exploration, isn't it? Yeah. Musical exploration. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You need the stems. You need the, you need the intrigue and the interest, don't you, in the first place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know what if like yeah what if you know that's how, that's how these new genres get formed as well. Like oh you know what if what if we mix this with this you yeah. know or, um, but yeah and also everything is a, uh, like even though original work is original work but like even. Um, everyone takes insp inspiration from something, you know, mm. like whether it be an energy, you know, I take a lot of inspiration from Nirvana in the way that like, and just like in the rawness of the, mm. of the, the music. Um, you know, I feel like my, my music has a bit of a rawness to it, a bit of a rough mm. roughness as well. Like, you know, um, cause Nirvana, they, they weren't, you know, they weren't, weren't perfect, but mm. they, you know, they'd like just the vibe and the energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like, you know, so, as long as uh, if you're, um, or for me anyway, if I'm like, you know, I just start with an energy, start mm. with a, yeah. It's everything, isn't it? Mm. Connect with the earth, energy, shit like that. It is, it is. But that's the way it is, isn't it? I think the more, I think the more, um, the more you do, going back to the pot pottery out, uh, mm. uh, overview there, I think the more you do, the better you get. It's simple as that. Yeah, and, and, you you will you at least learn, you know, and I feel like if you enjoy if you, because learning is a challenge, you know, it's, uh, yeah, uh, the samples are getting better and better, but like still you have to learn, like yeah, you get, you get the good samples, but you know you have to put them all together, like, yeah. um, and yeah, you, yeah, as long as you, because it can be uncomfortable when you're learning, is yeah, it's like discomfort, and you're like, you know a good night's sleep and you wake up the next day and you, hmm. you, you know, slightly more. It's like, like learning a language as well. Like, um, and your ears are rested as well. You can have a place. Yeah. Get your ears arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's why I admire people that have fag breaks. I mean, I'm not advocating <laughs> cigarettes, but you know what I mean? To get out of the room for like 10, 15 minutes, if that, and, and just, you know, reset. I admire set. that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been jealous as well. I've been jealous of the smokers as well in, in all my jobs that I've ever had. It's like, <laughs> no one's ever, I st still don't think that, that there's, that it's yeah like um, I, feel, I still think that they um, I feel, feel, still think that exists fag breaks I still yeah, think yeah, you yeah. know in every job yeah like and I've always been like oh like yeah I'm kind of jealous of that <laughs> but it's but you know it's got to be uh, yeah it is quite interesting yeah it's quite interesting it's, it's true it's true I prefer cigar breaks myself okay yeah, really yeah. break up the uh, the whole afternoon <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not good with cigars uh, uh, yeah I love it. Anyway, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> My brother, it's been a pleasure having you on. Oh, thanks, man. Honestly. No, thank, yeah, it's been a, a pleasure speed, to be here. More keep that thing moving, you yeah, know, yeah. law of averages and all that. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. No, nice one for having me. No, nah, nice it's been a me. pleasure, man. Uh, and, and that's it. That's your daily dose of wisdom, yeah? Uh, what more do you want? Huh? Killer Keller podcast, Alan, it was out of fashion, all right? Stay true to yourself. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Remember, crime don't pay. Who are neither today, all right? Stay lucky, people. Easy! <laughs> Oh, pick up.